Welcome to the latest edition of Share Views. We're here with a special edition uh, with uh, David Lenegas, who's chairman of Anglo-African Agriculture, a mainlisted PLC, and uh, quite a new move for you here uh, to, the, to the main market, David. Well, I mean, the last time I was on the main market was when we moved Lonro from AIM up to the main market, to the premium list. But an opportunity came up um, yeah, about a month ago to help rebuild AAAP on the main list and I thought this is where I want to go. It's in my space, it's in agriculture, it's in manufacturing, it's a great platform and you know, from my experience, you know, main list companies have, you know, are on the radar screen of pretty much every institution in the world because they can trade London main list whereas a lot of institutions can't trade the lower markets such as AIM and, um, and ISDX, but no, no, I'm excited about the growth of this thing. It's, it's early days and I love the platform and I love the team. Um, I've worked with some of the guys when I was with Lonro uh, in Africa on the team at AAAP and I think yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about where this thing can go. So is it a man, I mean the main listing, I mean I, I say I love AIM, I'm interested in ISDX, I love the small caps area, but is the, is the main listing, it's a different, is it a different league, just a different ball game? It has a whole lot different credibility with respect to the London institutions. And you know, when I did that financing in AAAP, which is subject to prospectus, um, and that's one of the big issues with, with, with the main list is you know, everything's got to principally be done on prospectus. I mean, I even, even had um, you know, good interest, interest for the financing out in New York. And, and they like what I'm doing in the agricultural space because they've been watching what I've been doing with, with, um, with Afria Global. And, um, you know, a fair chunk of the money for that £475,000 that I raised the other week actually did come from, from New York. So, um, and they're interested in, in, in agriculture and agri-logistics and food manufacturing. They see that as a sector from an American perspective that has a lot of legs. Do you, I mean, do you think that, I mean, it would have been better, let's say, with the benefit of hindsight and just the way things have gone, that if you'd actually only been occupying the, the main listing of the London Stock Exchange with your other projects in recent years? The, the, the problem with growth companies on the main list is it's very restrictive with respect to growth and raising money. And, and I've worked all markets in London, you know, from a, being a chairman, you know, chief executive, from London main list, AIM, and now ISDX, is quite often you need to raise money to go and buy assets. And the biggest restriction on you know, the LSE is you've only got a certain amount of headroom per year without going to shareholders to sit within the city code. Um, and it's very expensive to go and do a prospectus to raise funds. So, but apart from that, I mean, it's, it's a great market to be on. Right, um, I was speaking to you offline, uh, jokingly that you've been maybe You've gone rather quiet over the last year, maybe you're enjoying yourself, uh, you know, surfing, uh, climbing mountains, uh, training for the Olympics, things like that. But that's not been the case. I know my days of trying to get into the Olympics are well done. Um, no, I've been very busy. I mean, I, I, I sort of took a break from a lot of the companies that I was involved with on the AIM front, um, you know, just before Christmas last year because I had two of my children coming across to see me that I hadn't seen for six years. And I wanted to go back to their mother and say, you know, I had a really good time, Mum. I, I actually saw Dad, not, wow, I had a really good time, but I didn't see Dad for, for, for one to two months while I was there. I wish I never went. So it was more a life decision. And, and when I look at the companies that, you know, from an AIM perspective, where I stepped down from last year, you know, they're all got pretty good management going forward. You know, the, the assets have now been developed to that next stage. I've tried to put in some very good people who can take it forward. I'm not a very good person, you know, to put, to put it into a mining analogy. I like building the mine, but once the mine's running, to me, I'm not very good at it. So I would rather come into a company, help fix it, restructure it, move it in a different direction, than sit there and watch the ball mill go round and round. I was thinking of you as a Moses type figure that you take the people to the you know to the verge of the promised land, but then you you know you don't actually. Well, get everything's there. a promised land. I mean, that's what the stock market is, isn't it? Otherwise, why would people invest? Otherwise, the whole stock market would be short, short, short everything. Um, but you've got to have a dream and you've got to have a vision, and you need some you know a good set of shareholders that that want to come on the train journey with you, and you keep them on that train for as long as possible, because you know there's. 
there's hundreds, you know, thousands of companies out there all competing for people's attention and money. And you, as I keep saying, you can't go build businesses with bottle tops. So it actually takes real money to go and build those businesses. So it's not about Moses and the promised land. It's about, you know, we've got some visions and, and we want to execute them. And if I look at sort of the portfolio of the things that I'm working with right now, I mean, AAAP on the main list is um, I see some some really good potential there as we go and grow the business and maybe look for further acquisitions to make it into not a small but a medium to well-positioned food manufacturing company. Um, you know, I'm still involved with Cuba. Uh, we moved Cuba from here to the Canadian market and you know, that was a deliberate move on the basis that London, I don't think, got Cuba. Um, but Canada certainly does. You know, a third of the tourists who go to Cuba every year actually come from Canada. And, and Canada is a very big trading partner of Cuba and it has a long relationship there. Um, one of the really exciting things that, that, that I'm doing, and that's why I came on the board of Doremus, as, as the guys in the office call it, it's called Dory Emus, but um, it's about the only way we can pronounce it and spell it correctly first time. But um, Doremus is a player in the Horse Hill Syndicate, as people you know, refer to the, the Horse Hill players, the Gatwick Gusher, which it did gush. And you know, thank goodness um, you know, the, the flow tests in February and March were a great success. But Doremus is a very interesting company because to me, not only am I involved back into the Horse Hill Syndicate from a management perspective, but four and a half miles up the road, the Brockham Field, which is a production license as opposed to Horse Hill, which is an exploration play you know, for Horse Hill to go from, wow, we've found the oil 1.2 miles from Gatwick Airport, to is this a potential contributor to the UK economy? Brockham, which we have a 10% interest in, direct interest with Angus and a number of others, is actually a production license. And the work that we've done in the last couple of months indicates from Newtech, who we use primarily on the, uh, on the Horse Hill stuff, indicates that there's a lot of oil potential at Brockham. I think the, the numbers I published the other week was 282 million barrels per, squat, per square mile oil potential. I think Horse Hill was about 158 million barrels per square mile. Um, that sidetrack that we plan to drill between here and the end of the year will take three to four days to drill uh, Horse Hill took three months and because it's a production licence and we're going to be drilling right through what we hope is going to be the sweet spot of the Kimbridge Limestones and the Portlands, we can put that straight into production. And that has huge benefits for the syndicate that are involved with Brockham but also potentially for the UK, particularly after the Brexit result. Britain needs to start standing on its own two feet with respect to energy independence. It's probably, in my view, one of the key drivers of any country around the world is to be as self-sufficient in energy supply as you can be. So I'm very excited about that. And um, you know, the guys at Angus Energy, myself, we've all worked together on the Horse Hill stuff. Um, UCOG is a shareholder of Angus Energy. So it all sort of ties in nicely. So. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to that. And even though Doremus is listed on the ISDX, um, yeah, and Doremus, since I've become chairman, I think has traded nearly a billion shares on the ISDX. So people who say that the ISDX platform doesn't necessarily work, well, it is starting to work and it's starting to gather momentum and pace and people have got to learn how to trade it. So that's that. that I mean, the ISDX is, a, is, a, is a, a market I've been following very closely and I'm wishing it well, but it just didn't seem to... Get that uh, get over the over the line as far as being a uh, a liquid platform. Um, is it is it according to what you're saying? It's actually doing that now. Well, it's starting to change. I mean, if you look at what's what's happened. I mean, there's been a lot of work from from Michael Spencer and Patrick and the team on getting the electronic side of the the back office going, so people can onboard with respect to online trading and broker trading. Um, in the last little while you've had two online brokers, XO Jarvis and, um, and Share Centre go online. So if your clients of those two firms, you can actually trade ISDX online uh, at a very competitive price. Um, I mean, I was with Cornhill um, two days ago with some of the senior guys there and I said, look, why don't you guys go onto the ISDX platform 
and you can offer your clients a potential service in something that I think is, is starting to gather real momentum. And they literally sat there and called ProQuote and they said, turn me live on the RSP screen um, on ISDX. And by the time they got back to the office, they sent me a screenshot and said, we're live. Now they're meeting the ISDX management today. Uh, I know ISDX are making big moves with respect to other brokers coming online. And I think you know, as the momentum changes, people will say, well, there's another platform for us to trade on. And what I particularly like about ISDX, and every market has its own nuances, is it really is like old school stock market stuff. You buy shares with money you have and you sell shares that you own. It's a bit like the old days where you know, the floor guys used to cross tickets. You know, the whole concept of margin trading, shorting, derivatives, all that sort of stuff really doesn't exist on ISDX. Now obviously as, as life moves on and ISDX becomes more and more of a busy platform, you know, broking houses and banks and stockbrokers will work out how to put things like margin trading systems and all those sorts of things into place. But right now, it's, it, in my mind, it's, it's, it's an old-fashioned, straight-up stock exchange that I think has a lot of scope in this marketplace for growth companies. AIM has a huge place in this market. It always has done. You know, ever since I was, started getting involved with AIM back in 2003. But at the end of the day, you know, you need to give shareholders a choice on what tra platforms to trade. All right, so you're back with uh, your main listing company, AAP. Um, you're back with Horse Hill. Yep. Uh, is there anything else for the, the Lenny Gas mania uh, people, the people who loved you three, four years ago to, to latch on to? Well, I don't know, we just work out. <laughs> it's not a bit about love. Um, yeah, everything we do eventually gets there. Yeah, it's a matter of having a vision and a plan. Right now, my focus is AFRIAG, which is sort of ISDX listed. Doremus, which I'm very excited about for the short to medium term. Uh, AAAP, main board listed. I mean, it doesn't take much to turn around a company like that that's, that's been sitting there in, in really a, a news vacuum since, you know, for the last three years. I mean, I looked on the, um, the AAAP website uh, yesterday when I was sort of drafting something, and I think there's like 20 news releases since the company listed back in 2013. So it's about communicating with shareholders the vision you want, where you go, and you know, that's my job, communicating with shareholders. I don't think there's enough of it sometimes. Well, so um, you're continuing with your promotional ways? Well, as I said, there's, there's thousands of companies all out there competing for people's attention. And um, you know, my job is to communicate what I'm doing, what the company's doing, through as many platforms as I can um, in a responsible way with respect to the rules to tell people what I'm doing. David Lennigas, Chairman of AAAP, thank you very much for speaking with me today. Pleasure. Uh, thank you to David Lennigas, Chairman of AAAP. Uh, that's it for this week's Share Views. We'll see you again next week.